Power BI, will now be recorded. Uh, which is a software package from Microsoft, but you can also use Python, R, uh, ArcGIS, or any other preferred uh, package. Um, furthermore, there are two easy to use uh, uh, portals and a uh, catalog, um, which allow for easy data exploration um, and to also be able to find out what types of data are stored within the um, data warehouse. So a bit more about the current data sources that are available to you within the project. Um, so there's a lot of uh, water data already in the in the warehouse. Um, and I think a useful data set is um, our water level measurements from the Dutch National Monitoring Network for Water Levels, LMB. Um, they will um, provide you water levels um, uh, from uh, from the past, but also uh, um, yeah, actual current water levels. Um, furthermore, there are um, uh, yeah model results um, that can be stored within the platform. There are currently some flood uh, models that um, yeah can be um, uh, used for analysis or used to explore the region a bit more. Um, we also have a, a two digital terrain models uh, on the platform available for you. Um, a piece of the digital terrain model from Vlaanderen and also from the Netherlands. Uh, furthermore, there is um, meteorological data available from the KNMI and from the National Rain Radar, which is a Dutch um, weather forecast and uh, measurement. And it's based on German, Belgian, and uh, Dutch radar images. Uh, it's available from 2010 up till now um, and will be uh, available uh, through the whole of the project. And furthermore, we have some uh, electro resistance measurements um, available, um, which are currently only reports. Um, yeah, and I think most of the important things of this presentation is that you can access the data warehouse and portal through hetwigeprosperpolder.lizard.net. So I think it's maybe good to write it down right now and uh, so you can follow along uh, later on. And of course, of course, we will also distribute the, the link uh, to you if not already uh, done. Um, so let me uh, so let's go to the, to the link. I will make you presenter of Yuri, and yep. I will start being presenter again. Uh, let me dismiss Nela and Schumans. Yes. Oh, I threw her out. Sorry. Uh, okay. Yes. <laughs> Um, so I start sharing my screen now, and what we're gonna do? Oh. Sorry. Okay. So uh, let me see how I should put this away. Yes. Okay. So what you see now, if I go to hetwigeprosperpolder.lizard.net, uh, then you will enter the, uh, well, the, actually the client of the Dyke Data Service Center. Um, this is kind of the home page. Uh, there's a whole lot behind it where what we're going to show you uh, now, and which, which is actually more interesting probably than the, the client itself. So first to show you around. Um, so there, uh, uh, to to enter it, uh, also without an account, you can look into the the apps, for example. Uh, what you see here is data wish list. That is the the questionnaire we're going to ask you to fill in. Uh, there's also questionnaire two. That is for the last part of this webinar, uh, which you also can find uh, in the apps. is a is a webinar uh, we did in uh, July, but that's. Uh, uh, 
a YouTube movie of this webinar, but it's uh, totally in Dutch. But we will record this meeting as well and put it uh, on uh, Vimeo or YouTube or something like that and uh, edit here as well. Um, furthermore, there's a file share where you have some uh, background reports. Uh, we'll talk to uh, Jasper to discover which kind of documents will be shared in the file share or we stay uh, using SharePoint, which you, you already use. Um, uh, if you'd like to have an account, the, the amount of accounts are unlimited, uh, but uh, you have to send a, a, an email to servicedesk at nalen uh, uh, sorry, uh, nalen. Oh yeah, we'll put it in the chat screen. Can you put it in the chat screen? The email address where you can uh, ask for an account. I think a lot, some of you uh, at least uh, already have an account. That's important. Um, yeah, so let me show you around. Uh, if you enter, you see the picture like this. We start with uh, the catalog because this shows you uh, what kind of data is uh, available within the Dike Data Service Center. Um, so there is roster information available and you have uh, data sources from the web available. So, for example, the primary levies of the of the Netherlands, they are uh, uh, presented from another um, national source. Um, you can click on it and you can also use this WMS to, uh, to, to look at the data within your own uh, GIS software. But let me start with uh, the roster data. Yuri just explained to you a little bit already about uh, the rainfall radar which is a composition of the Dutch, the Belgium, and the German um, meteorological uh, uh, agency forecast. So you can find uh, every five minutes of rainfall for uh, since the 1st of January 2010, also for this area, and it will look three hours ahead. So the database is uh, uh, growing. Then uh, we'll get later on the, in this agenda on the, the the ways you can use this data in your own uh, platform uh, or in your own tools, but you see uh, the functions here. So you, there's a WMS service. Uh, we can open it in the client, which we're going to do after this. You can open it in API. We'll have a short workshop of 20 minutes, part of this uh, webinar, how to use the API. But you can also export it as a raster format, so you can uh, include it in your uh, uh, ArcGIS or in QGIS to look at the data. So if I click on that, I will go into that, sorry. Um, later. Um, so now I'm going back to the, the client to show you a little bit about the functionalities. What I like here a lot is, uh, which is quite funny actually, is that the Dutch elevation model is quite strictly uh, 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 using the, the border the, at a strict uh, extent up to the Dutch border, but our Flemish neighbors are a bit more uh, tolerant. They also take the Dutch part uh, into account. Uh, it's a one by one meter uh, digital elevation model. And uh, Yuri explained this like it's not only a data warehouse, but you have some uh, analysis uh, capabilities as well. So, for example, for raster data, what you can do is rescale it by double clicking on the, the raster layer. And that gives a very interesting uh, picture of the area where you can see uh, all the uh, flows of the, the water back into the uh, elevation model. And it shows you a bit about how the poldering phases of, uh, of this part uh, of the project area uh, was formed. Um, so what you can do also is using here, you have some analysis tools, so for example, check and see how the, uh, yeah, the elevation is along this, uh, this line. You can export it also. Um, furthermore, uh, yeah, there were some measurements of the, the baseline uh, study for the polar, showing some uh, electrifying, what was the name of this uh, measurement? Electronic resistance. That part. Uh, it was carried out in these uh, these parts, and you can uh, zoom in, of course. And then you see there are all little dots with some uh, data behind it. 
and well you see the location the resistivity the conductivity but you can also click on the link and then it shows you the uh, yeah from the reports but it shows you the the, uh, the profile of the uh, of the measurements along that uh, that part of the dike um furthermore um it's uh, we said there was a raster data available um, so what I'd like to show you is a short flood model. So let's say what happens when we're actually breaching the dikes. Uh, and this shows also how uh, raster data uh, is available in time as well. Is that you can uh, show, so for example, if, if it breaches here, where my mouse is actually, uh, then you'll see the pattern and you can click stop at any moment and see the, the water depths at that, at that moment in the in the folder. Um, yeah, furthermore, um, it's possible to have uh, to add some favorites. Uh, so what you can do is whenever you have a screen where you clicked on uh, several measurement points, a uh, roster is just fill in a name, uh, just one, two, three here click plus and every time you go back to the to the to the home page to the client of the Dike data service center you can find under favorites you can find your favorites it's pretty easy under apps there are two uh, already prepared by uh, yuri so this one for example shows the meteorological stations in the in the area um, so that's the app meteo and we also prepared the app water levels so it shows you uh, which water levels are in the area. And if you click on graphs, then you see from all these uh, measurement stations, you see the actual water level. Uh, and Yuri, I think you included one of the Flemish measurements as well, right? Yes. So this gives a, a quite fast and general overview, I think, of uh, uh, of what the, the portal looks like. Um, I know, are there any questions uh, at this point? No question about which model. Ah, for this uh, model, yeah, we uh, we use the, the model instrument 3DI. Uh, uh, and here we use the, I think the, the Flemish uh, <laughs> elevation model. So you see the, I don't actually, it is worth more a test case to show you what's possible than uh, uh, because I think the, the especially the Prosper polar uh, elevation uh, already changed uh, a lot. Uh, but we will make it available in this portal just uh, to have an idea uh, on how the flooding could look like during the, the floods, uh, during the uh, breach. Let me see. Okay, Yuri sent a link to the modeling software which was used. Um, yeah, if there are no questions uh, at this moment, I think it's nice to continue to, to get a bit more into the available data in the Dike Data Service Center. I'm also looking to Wouter, are you agree? Yes. Yes, he's nodding and, uh, and saying it out loud. So, uh, yes, yeah, shall we do that? Yeah. Okay. Um, let me see. I will... Yeah, so first the elevation. What's nice to know, we have the uh, elevation model from the Netherlands, which has a resolution of uh, 25 by 25 centimeters. Um, but that's only available in the Hedwig uh, polder part. Yeah, and if you use this double click option, it shows you, yeah gives you, uh, I really like this one, my, my favorite options because it shows uh, <laughs> quite some pretty pictures and shows you like every detail uh, of the landscape. Um, so what I said, the DTM, that is the Flemish elevation uh, model, which shows you, uh, you know, for example, uh, the work that the, uh, let's say the constructor of the new dike, you see it here. 
Uh, I figure, I don't know what's the status now. Is it already finished? Until the border. Okay, yeah. And so it was also possible to make it a bit more transparent. So the border is here. So actually they finished uh, the map. So the elevation model is already a, a bit of outdated. Um, so the elevation model, and this is also available. We will look, uh, we will show you later how you can uh, actually uh, export this data to use it for your own uh, uh, wishes. Um, we also have the, the land use map. Uh, I don't know if it is much of interest, but uh, what is actually a nice option just to show you some functionality of the analysis platform is that you can also, if you click this one, uh, let me see. Um, uh, you can make a quick agri uh, analysis of uh, of regions. Just so now, for now, example, I click this uh, community and you directly see the amount of uh, land use uh, for grass in this case. Uh, it's kind of agriculture and I think so actually only 2% is a, a populated area or urban area in this uh, this region. Um, so that is uh, 1%. Another part, the rain radar. So I, I just told you that you can look back to uh, 10 years. So let's say uh, you can click here the the date. Uh, sorry? Oh, sorry. I took the wrong one at uh, the start and end. So let's say, okay, let's see what, uh, what happened in Christmas 2014. Uh, yeah, what, you, what I can do is also zoom in. Is that zoom in? No. And you can uh, play to see how. Uh, ah, wait. So you can see at every moment uh, how much uh, rain there was. Maybe Yuri, you can explain a little bit yeah. better. Uh, like this. So um, yeah, you can basically scroll through time using this uh, time bar. If you use it for the first time, it can be a bit complicated. Uh, but as you can see, it starts to aggregate all the data. So if you zoom in um, really, really to the most detailed level, you will see the five minute uh, images. Um, and if you start to zoom out, it will aggregate to hourly images and to daily images and to monthly images. Um, you can either use um, yeah, these start and um, uh, end date pickers, or you can scroll through uh, through the bar using your mouse. Um, and you can also play the um, the yeah the rain that has fallen in that uh, specific time frame. As you can see, uh, yeah, you can see what happened in the past. Yeah, yeah, the reason I like to show you this option as well is that we used in former uh, Ike Dyke uh, um, uh, tests. It was also that there was uh, raster data used in time, for example, to monitor uh, uh, yeah, landslide uh, uh, near this region in the Westerschelde. Okay, um, so the next data source. Um, yes, the flood simulation. I already uh, showed you that. Um, uh, what's also nice is that it uh, directly calculates, for example, uh, arrival times of the of the water, um, but the, also the maximum uh, water level during the during the simulation, uh, or the speed how how fast uh, the water rises at a, at a certain uh, pixel. 
Um, so these are all the kind of roster information, which is actually one of the data types that is uh, 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 stored in the DAG Data Service Center. Another strong point is the measurements and the monitoring. Uh, that is time series data. Uh, and then I'd like to show uh, Yuri uh, to uh, show you the possibilities yeah. of that part. Shall I just use my laptop? Yes, that, uh, okay. yeah. yeah. Yeah, so all um, time series data is um, uh, collected in the water layer. And this layer con contains all the uh, measurement stations that uh, contain time series. Um, so for instance, here you see two um, measuring stations that are uh, part of the uh, Dutch monitoring network for water levels. Um, to pick this one, it's called LMW, Dutch Landelijk Meetnet Water. Um, and they measure all sorts of um, yeah, data related to water levels, uh, for instance, wind speed uh, and corrections on the wind. Um, but for instance, if we go to yeah, water height, um, we can look at the um, water height in the past two weeks, which is not available for this um, measuring station. So this one is available up to 2019. Uh, which is a pity, I think. Uh, but if we, for instance, go to this one, um, we'll see it up to up till now. You can also, yeah, get into the past if you're interested in that. Um, and you see the uh, yeah the tidal movement of this uh, um, water body. Um, you can also um, open this graph into a bigger screen. Uh, to be able to explore it even better. Um, if you want to export uh, this data, uh, you can use the export functionality. And here you can select the parameter and that you would like to export and the time frame. Um, once you start the export, um, it will start up a task in the background. And once it's ready, you will see the red number here on your user account. And um, you can download the Excel file to be able to use it um, locally. Um, let me see. So that is the um, yeah, Landelijk Meetnet, so the water levels. Furthermore, we have um, some rain data from the uh, Dutch Meteorological Institute. Um, these are the ones closest by the area, so you can use this, uh, yeah, this app to to look them up. Uh, but for instance, if we open the graph mode, you can see all sorts of uh, data measured on these uh, measurement stations. Um, this is all the um, precipitation data, but they also collect uh, evaporation data, pressure data, wind speeds, air temperatures, and it can be used in your analysis. Um, yeah, so later on I will show you how to um, yeah use the API of this uh, of the DDSC to uh, yeah make real time connections with the data. Yeah, I think this is a, a, a quite an important point for the Dyke Data Service Center, also relating to uh, all kind of uh, dike stress tests or uh, tests, because, for example, also pore pressure measurements uh, uh, or groundwater level measurements uh, are used, uh, yeah, are also time series data. Um, and this shows you mostly what the uh, uh, what the Dyke Data Service Center is for. So both for uh, roster information as for time series uh, information. Well, there is also uh, some asset information available within the portal. Uh, it's not uh, a BIM model or something like that, uh, what I think uh, uh, the partners from Lille are, uh, are working on. 
uh, but what it, for example, shows you is uh, the location of the, well, the primary levels in the Netherlands. You can click on it, you can find uh, some data on it. So this is actually just uh, the national uh, uh, map or the, the national data set for it. Uh, but we can all, yeah, you can add more asset information uh, if you like. Uh, but the main uh, yeah, feature of the Dyke Data Service Center is actually uh, uh, yeah, roster and time series uh, information. So I hope this part is uh, uh, is clear. Let me see if there are any questions at this point. No. Um, then let me stop sharing my screen for a moment. Check the agenda. Sorry. Yeah, the data wish list, and then I will show you what would be really helpful not only for us but i think also for the project is to get a better picture of the, the data that is uh, uh, going to be used in this project or going to be gathered in this uh, project so we prepared a small google form about this uh, i shared my screen yeah I'm just checking if you go to uh at the prosper folder dot lizard dot net and you go to apps you find data wish list, you click on the, the icon, and there you find the Google form. Uh, so please uh, fill that in for the next, uh, well, let's say to 10.50, then we have eight minutes. Uh, and we have uh, at the same time, uh, yeah, a small break of the webinar. And then we will see the results coming in to have a short conversation uh, about that. And if there are any questions in the meantime, please put them in the chat screen. We will monitor the chat screen. Thank you. I will put on a hold and we'll meet you again in eight minutes.
Okay. We have uh, in can you please? Yeah, Ludolf uh, has entered the building. <laughs> so, uh, welcome, Ludolf, as well. Um, so, it's uh, 10 to 11. Um, I've seen the, the forms coming in, uh, and I think it's nice to, uh, to share my screen to look into the, uh, the answers. And maybe it's also nice that uh, a few of you will. Uh, uh, shortly explain more why uh, you answered the question as you did. So let me share my screen and you can see what I see on the. So is my screen? Yeah. yeah. So everyone will fill it in. Um, short screen from the the organizations who are um, involved. So in which data type? type presented, are you particularly interested? So I gave the option, uh, uh, the possibility to give only one answer, but some of you uh, uh, used uh, the other by uh, stating all of the above. And that's also uh, interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, so maybe someone, uh, I see the 30% you know, of the answers were the measurements and monitoring, water levels, meteorological, pore pressure, etc. Is someone willing to to uh, explain a bit more what uh, what kind of measurements they expect to execute or to use for their analysis? I can't see at this moment who filled in what, but maybe someone wants to elaborate a little bit on. Uh, the use of this data no maybe uh, someone for a roster information i see oh, well 20 percent so actually two well th this is davy uh, speaking yes. from uh, antwerp but why why are you asking this question if i may ask because i think uh, defining which data is is uh, important is part of the exercise in setting up survey and, and uh, monitoring plans? Or is this question intended for you to know which kind of data that will be entered in the system in the future? Uh, yes, uh, uh, thank you. It's uh, uh, mostly the last part. That, uh, it's quite interesting for us to, to know like, uh, yeah, what data will be used most. Uh, also for Yuri uh, a bit later to use also in this uh, small workshop. How are you going to use time series data? How are you going to use uh, roster information? Um, yeah, it helps, for example, to know like, are you uh, expecting to set up your own dashboards to monitor, for example, uh, the dike strength or the, some parameters uh, in the dike, or uh, will you use it mostly for analysis purposes? Of course, you're right that uh, it doesn't matter that much actually for the data warehouse because the functions are there so you can use it in uh, either way but uh, uh yeah i think it's interesting to know uh, how the system will be used also to know how to uh, uh, uh to set up the system is that a, an answer to your question uh it, it definitely is and i think uh, the, the categories of data that you show or have shown so far cover many types, uh, like at a very high level, types of data that can be expected, uh, like map or raster uh, information, uh, vector data, uh, which uh, is uh, shown in the asset information, for example. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we will expect many types of uh, time series measurements, but I cannot answer the question related to use in dashboards and so on, but in analysis, especially in other tools, um, well, personally, I'm very interested in that. For instance, uh, using the VMS layers in a QGIS or ArcGIS or making links towards R or Python is very interesting. Okay. Uh, but one type of data that I didn't, I didn't see yet was uh, related to vertical uh, data types like uh, drilling logs, uh, borehole descriptions, uh, vertical CPT data. Is this uh, a data type? to get like vertical views on data? Is this available in the DDSC? I will give you a yeah. yeah. uh, um, 
so it's not you're not able to to store um uh, like the actual uh, data within the um uh, data sa and um, what mm -hmm. is possible is um is this we showed you uh, earlier but if you for instance take the ERT measurements. Um, then you're able to store this within a WMS. I think I have my mic. Um, so, for instance, uh, yeah, these are sort of um, depth profiles. Um, but of course, as you can see, you can kind of see here the data in API or download it. As so storing the depth data is not possible. Storing, for instance, Boho reports is possible like this. Does that answer your question? Yes, okay, that's clear. So on the things like PDFs will be understood. Yeah, you can you can store PDFs and so on within the system like this. No, it's the PDFs are also not stored within the system. Uh, uh, so, so basically you can use any file share um as long as it has a link to it. Um you'll be able to yeah configure a shape file in WMS format. Um and then add the links of the specific borehole to uh, the attribute table of that WMS and for you to be able to link to the report related to the borehole, for instance. Is that clear? Okay, yes, thank you. Yeah, that is then if, if I may uh, uh, add, uh, yeah. if I may add to that, uh, whenever a uh, uh, monitoring well is installed in the borehole, with a water pressure sensor uh, or such a, a measuring device, that data can be stored in the data ASA. Yeah. Um, and we did that uh, in um, other experiments uh, uh, conducted prior uh, to this uh, project. We did do that already. Um, and the main goal is to gather as much as uh, useful data as can be uh, stored in the data ASA to be able to uh, analyze the I hear myself talking again. Uh, to be able to analyze the data uh, from the experiments and from the projects in an orderly fashion. Exactly. Uh, so, um, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Because that is time series uh, data. So then you have uh, the, like the static data as uh, the result of a, of a, of a, of a boring hole or the result of the CPT. Uh, is not available in a structured way uh, in the DDSC. All right, there is a, a different um, uh, location on the common SharePoint of the project, um, a different uh, folder on the SharePoint which contains uh, data that we already uh, gathered uh, in the past two or three years. Yes, thank you, Logan. And I think we will add, oh, was it uh, actually? Did you put your mic on when you talk just now? So I don't think. Ah, okay, so did, did you hear what the Wouter was just saying about uh, the SharePoint? I don't think so. So maybe uh, Wouter, can you repeat? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, again, uh, for uh, the SharePoint, because I switched my mic on, uh, on the SharePoint, there's a different uh, folder which contains already gathered data and information and that was uh, uh, boring holes and cpts from the flemish government but also from the dutch water boards and uh, uh, other data yes so now i'm switching my mic off again thank you wouter um yeah so what we can do we'll discuss with wouter and jasper for example under apps making a direct link to the sharepoint folder i think that's uh, most convenient um okay 
Um, so we were looking into the data wish list. So it was good to talk about the, the data type, about the vertical uh, vertical data. Um, I see some interest in uh, running flood models. So I think it's good to know also that, of course, we use the, the 3DI instrument here, but if you would like uh, to use a SOBAC model or a dehydro model or something like that, um, well, uh, the results of that flooding information is also a, uh, possible to store that in uh, in the Dyke Data Service Center. Uh, so when it comes to rasters, that's clear, uh, but it might also uh, can also also net CDF files, for example. Um, um, let me see further when I'm looking into the data, you can read along as well. So if you, if you read something where you have a question about, uh, please put that on the chat screen as well. So in which data are you particularly interested? This gives you a bit more room to elaborate uh, on that. On that, Yeah, all expected monitoring. So that is exactly, uh, I read, that is exactly the, the reason why data, Dyke Data Service Center is uh, one, developed, and two, uh, having a role within the Polder to Seas uh, project. Uh, so just like uh, other Dyke experiments in the past, uh, uh, who was, uh, because I think most of you, or a lot of you were also involved in these kind of experiments, um, all data, was also uh, collected within the Dyke Data Service Center and is still available also in the Dyke Data Service Center. So that's also one reason uh, to use uh, this platform is to also not forget or uh, losing all uh, data uh, coming from this project. So if you're interested uh, also, for example, in data about the lane the Boer Pool or something like that, um, then uh, it's also available in the da uh, Data Service Center. We can make it, for example, available using the favorite option, which I showed you in the client. Um, but uh, obviously, we just need to know whatever you like to see, uh, and then we can uh, prepare it, or you can prepare it yourselves, as we showed you as well. Um, yeah, uh, continue a bit. Uh, how do you expect to use that data, which is also a nice bridge to our next agenda point? Um, so I see directly integrate into models for their calibration with testing results. Uh, yeah, that's also interesting uh, and I think a nice topic to discuss with the, uh, discussing the API uh, because what we explained, Dyke Data Service Center is a cloud solution, which makes it also possible, for example, if you have a model running in the cloud, uh, that you can integrate those two. So, for example, if you want to have a live uh, dike analysis module, uh, like live dike strength calculation, and you want to use water levels, or you want to use pore pressures for measurements in the dike, it's easy to connect that to uh, to the dike data service center. Um, so furthermore, I see during high water inspection, teams walk the dike several times in a week. We want to determine if the situation condition will change in time and action is needed. I think this is a comment uh, but please uh, intervene when I'm uh, wrongly explaining it. Um, uh, this is also the topic like how to uh, process inspection results, for example, pictures or um, maybe damage reports in the Dyke Data Service. So what I understood from Wouter, there's going to be a, the use of, uh, of an app collector, which is an S3 uh, uh, tool. Uh, and uh, we're uh, currently, but I think we'd like to uh, to be in contact uh, with the one who is using that to to see how the app is used and to see how we can connect the output to the Dyke Data Service Center. Uh, may I add? Yours? Yes. I'm switching my microphone on again. Um, uh, so uh, this app was uh, uh, used uh, during the field visit uh, in the first partner meeting in January. And Marianne Bolting of the uh, water board um, uh, in Houten in the Netherlands, uh, she uh, uh, told us to use that specific app. So perhaps uh, uh, you should uh, contact Marianne Bolting. Yes, I will check it in the box on the right. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah great. I've... And I think she is joining uh, our uh, webinar as well. She's with Bart Funk. Uh, yeah, I, I've I've just it? turned on my mic uh, also. Marion just. We will be in uh, in touch uh, about that. Since it is Esri software, I expect that we will be uh, be able to uh, to make a, a good connection with it because it's also uh, uh, GIS software. Okay. Can you then, hear me, Leo? Uh, or well, yes, we have for field inspection results. Yes. Thank you. Um, we continue to the next agenda point, and then I will make uh, Yuri presenter again. Uh, first, Yuri, I would like to ask you to show the options which are available uh, to connect to the data or use the data from the uh, Dyke Data Service Center. And secondly, if you give us a small workshop, the, uh, the video conferencing about how to use the, the API to make uh, real-time services available within your own tools. So. I'm going to make Yuri presenter and switch off my mic. Ah, sorry, I found it. Yep. Yes. Yep. So, um, yeah, I will just continue talking about the API. So, um, yeah, first of all, it's good to know that there is a, um, yeah, really good documentation about the API, um, which can be found on docs.lizard.net. Um, I can show you. Um, and on this website, you will find all the documentation about the platform. Um, here you can also find um, relevant information about uh, types of data that can be stored, uh, how to manage that data, um, for instance, also how to use the portal. Um, all functionality is described uh, on this website. Um, and here you can also find the functional and technical documentation about the API of the platform. Um, and I will yeah, guide you through the basics of the API um, right now. So the API of the DDSC is a RESTful API, uh, which is basically an, uh, a style of API. And when you ask a question uh, through the API, the response of the API will be in JSON, which is a yeah, text-based file format um, that basically all um, yeah, programming interfaces or application can communicate with. Um, there are two versions of the API. Uh, V3, version 3, is the stable API. And if you're going to make an operational connection to um, the DDSC, I recommend using that API because uh, that doesn't change. Then you have version 4, which is experimental. Um, which can definitely be used, uh, but know that it's under construction. So uh, things can change in that API. And if you're going to make an operational uh, analysis, uh, it's not nice to continuously uh, have to change um, connection parameters. So um, yeah, let's start off with, uh, with the real basics. Um, so how do you make a query? How do you ask a question to the API? And to do that, you have to um, first type in the base URL into your browser, um, which is hetwigeprospepolder.lizard.net slash API slash v3. Um, and I can do it here as well. So 
So if you go to that um, URL, you will get a list of all available endpoints. Um, and endpoints can best be translated to um, yeah, a locate, um, a uh, yeah, place where you can find the data. Um, for instance, we have for all uh, objects that are um, yeah, available in the DDSC, we have a, a separate endpoint. Uh, for instance, we have a groundwater stations endpoint or a measuring stations endpoint. Um, and here you will always also find the rasters endpoint that can be used to ask um, questions to the API with regards to rasters. Can you see this? Yeah. Okay. And you can also um, uh, query or ask questions for in the time series endpoint. Um, so basically, if you're interested in time series, go to the time series endpoint. If you're interested in rasters, go to rasters. If you're interested in an asset, go to the specific asset endpoint. Once you're in that um, endpoint, you can start building up your uh, question using query parameters. And basically, these are filters um, for you to be used to ultimately get the data that you want. Um, and if you go to um, a random endpoint, for instance, a time series endpoint, you will find a, a list and description of all the available query parameters on that um, endpoint. Um, yeah, it's basically uh, yeah, a long list that you can go through. But for instance, you can query on the name of a location. Um, you can search for um, locations that have, for instance, Falkenberg in their name. Um, you can search for specific UUIDs. And there's all sorts of parameters to be able to, for you to find the data that you want. Um, so in this case, I'm requesting a time series, um, and I want a minimum of 500 data points um, in my request. Um, the page size can be used to, um, yeah, choose the size of the page. So um, the default size of the page is 10. So you will find 10 JSON objects, uh, which is basically quite, yeah, it's quite short. And if you, um, yeah, increase the page size, more data is being requested in one uh, page. Um, then I choose a start and end period to be able to request a specific period for this time series. And here I request and the specific locations that I want the time series from. And these are uh, measuring stations close by the Hedwig Kosmopol area. And altogether, these, um, uh, the base URL, the endpoint, and the query parameters make your query. So if we copy and paste this into the browser, it will start collecting the data. You see it's, uh, it's still busy. Um, and now it's ready, and you see that there's a yeah quite a big page opening up. And here I see the request in JSON. So I see that um, yeah it found ten time series related to these locations. Um, and you can, for instance, see the UUID, which is a unique identifier uh, of this time series. Uh, you see the name um, and all sorts of metadata related to this time series. Also, the geometry related to um, this time series. And if I scroll down, I can see this time timestamp and a specific value of this time series. Um, but as a human being, you uh, you are not um, able to do much with this data and um, it's not really readable for humans this json format but it is very readable for uh, applications and i've prepared an example in power bi 
which is basically a um, yeah Excel Microsoft Excel on steroids, and you can um, yeah request data from the DDSC using Power BI. Um, So if I go to the first step that I made in this application, um, you will see that um, I requested a JSON document, um, which I am going to import using web contents. And then here I've entered um, a URL. And basically what I'm doing here Demo can, by the way, be Hedwig, uh, Hedwig uh, Boller. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm requesting the measuring stations endpoint, and I want all measuring stations back that are within a specific uh, geographic area, uh, which, which you can describe using a B box. Then I'm requesting. Uh, and I'm giving my uh, username and password uh, to be able to query data that's normally behind login. And once I um, um, yeah, fire that query to the API, it gives a response. So here it says that I found three um, measuring stations in this area. And then I can start to drill through the response using Power BI. Um, here on the right side, you see the steps I applied, and I will guide you through um, them. So I started navigating using this uh, link. And then you can see that Power BI is able to yeah, um, um, yeah, drill through this JSON um, response. So there's a list of, uh, of data, and I converted it to a table. Then I expanded columns. And here you can see uh, that actual data is um, yeah, coming through. So I see uh, an ID of this location. You can see a code related to the location and a name. Um, and these lower two are part of the um, monitoring network for water levels. And this one is, I think, a Belgium data source. You can also see that there's uh, more data to be, um, yeah, to be extracted, which is the geometry, so the location of these um, locations. So I can drill through and extract the values. And here you see three values, which is basically an X value, a Y value, and a Z value. So I can um, split them into separate columns. Um, and then I'm going to change the type. So it was text and I just made it a number. Um, I removed the Z column because I'm not interested in it. Then I renamed the columns to human readable columns, changed some more types, renamed it again into object ID, object code, object name, and the two location parameters. Um, so once I've uh, done this, I can uh, yeah, close this uh, screen down. And I'm going to apply um, the changes that I made. So it's refreshing the data right now. Um, and here you see um, a map item within Power BI. Here's my, uh, my data that I requested from the API. And I can move it through um, yeah, the parts of this map element. So I choose location 2 as the latitude, location 1 as the longitude. And I want the legend to be based upon the um, object code. And once I do that, I see the location of the um, actual data. Um, then in another uh, query, I requested the time series related to um, 
yeah to this uh, to these measuring points um, and I can make relations between them for instance I can press on this location and I see the water height that has been measured um, through 2019 um, but for instance I can also uh, find the water height measured over here so uh just one thing to add. I think what's important when I started saying that uh, the client, so the homepage of the Dyke Data Service Center, it's not the most interesting part, is now showed by uh, Yuri, I think, because uh, what it really is, is the data warehouse. So uh, yeah, it stores all the available data, uh, all different types of data, and you can actually publish that data or use that data in your own platforms. So Power BI is one example. Yeah. I think shortly there's also an, uh, a course you're going to give on how to use this kind of data in, in Excel, actually. Yeah. Which there's also possibilities to use it in R or with Python. Yeah. Uh, or with all different kind of tools. Yeah. So I just like to add <laughs> to yeah. add that uh, shortly. So yeah, this is a really short example of what you can do. Um, and Power BI is, is quite nice to make very specific dashboards. For instance, if you want to monitor certain measurements during an experiment or something. Um, and I can also continue um, making analysis based upon this data. I'm not going to do that now. Uh, subsequently, right now, I want to um, give you um, an example of how to query a raster. Um, so I have three types of queries um, yeah, visualized here. So one is requesting a, a point using the API, so coordinate and the value in a raster related to that coordinate. We're going to request values along a line and um, yeah, request a curve using the API. So basically, again, I um, Enter the base URL, hetvigeprospepolder.lizard.net uh, API, and now I'm using version 4, because there are quite some cool features in this new API. Then I'm continuing to the rasters endpoint. And right now we are um, requesting a specific raster. And to do that, you have to look for the UUID, which is the unique identifier of a raster. Um, so if you go into the catalog of the um, DDSC, you can select a um, raster and you will find the UUID in the catalog. Um, and this is a uh, elevation raster that I'm going to request. So if you go to this specific endpoint, you will find all the relevant metadata related to this raster um, and you also find some actions which are basically sub queries that you can perform on this raster um, which are counts curve you can request the actual data um, you can request data along a line. Um, and you can, for instance, also make zonal uh, statistics. So we are going to request a point um, with a um, specific coordinate. And if I fire this query um, to the API, I will find a value of minus 4.13, um, which is the height in meters above mean sea level. Um, to request a line, you choose the line sub endpoint and then give the geometry of the line you would like to uh, get the values along. And if I put this or fire this to the API, I get a all the values along this line uh, back. So the re resolution of the <clears throat> roster determines the amount of points you get on that line. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's correct. Um, and I can also request a curve. Um, which is basically a distribution of the height um, in, yeah, it's percentages against uh, the actual value. And you can also do this using the portal. You can explain this type of query a bit more. So we take the digital terrain model. And if I select the region select, I'll get back, um, yeah, the curve. So you see that 80% of this area is below uh, 1.79 meters above mean sea level. And <clears throat> you can also request this data using the API, using this curve method. Um, yeah, so that was an example of how to query um, a raster. Um, yeah, what is uh, what is a nice example to continue with? Yeah, maybe uh, how how you can calculate with two rosters. You have one option uh, of new land and yeah, just so to show you one possibility of how you can perform analytics actually with uh, the API. Yeah. Um, so. I'm going to look for the. So in the Netherlands, we have this uh, sequential measuring of the elevation. Um, and you can make really nice analysis um, with the data. For instance, <clears throat> recently, the, yeah, the newest version of the uh, elevation model uh, was being published. And we can see how the elevation changed over time. Uh, let me see if to look for the right one. This one. So I can open this in the portal. So here I see the difference of <laughs> the length of the, or the elevation um, within the uh, the verdronken land van Saftingen, which is basically um, how the area will uh, in the Hedwig Prosperpolder will look, look like in uh, tens of years. And the redder the color, um, the more height it increased over time. So you can see it's a very active area um, where in some part uh, the land got higher and in some parts the land eroded and got lower. <clears throat> I think we got a question, uh, Yuri. Yeah. Maybe this is a nice uh, moment. <coughs> so what is the geo reference, the referencing system and what are the requirements for the data? That's question one. Yeah. So you can basically store uh, any type of uh, reference system. Um, so it doesn't really matter if you apply or, or if you uh, are going to import the data in GeoTIFF, uh, the system will yeah, look for the um, reference system and then you can request the data in any reference system you would like. Uh, I can show you that using the export screen. So you can uh, export a raster. You select the specific tile you, you go want. One step back. Yeah. Show them uh, where you you can find. <laughs> yeah. So what, sorry. What Yuri is uh, <laughs> Yuri is doing all the time is using the catalog function, which you find on the homepage in the apps, uh, to use uh, actually for export or using uh, or seeing the data. And there are several. The buttons within yeah. this. Uh, so maybe you can uh, elaborate a little bit on uh, what kind of options do you have, and please go into this uh, export raster as well. Uh, yeah. Then. Yeah. So once you select um, a data layer, and you have a few actions you can perform, so you can open it in the portal, open it in the API, uh, and you can export the actual data. 
So once I go into this menu, uh, I'll get this grid view and I can um, yeah, export a specific tile of data that I'm interested in. And here I can choose from a very long list of spatial references. Um, and it basically gives you uh, the reference system that was used uh, during the import. Uh, but you can also uh, use a um, completely different um, reference system. Then I can choose the pixel size. And I know that this <coughs> raster is uh, half by half a meter, which is quite small. And you can see that the tile size that I'm able to export uh, decreases uh, once I increase the resolution of the raster. And I can use the tile width parameters to increase the uh, pixel size. I can subsequently select the area that I'm interested in and start the download. <laughs> and this will take a while and you will get a message once your export is uh, is ready. May I ask a question uh, 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 directly to uh, Davy? Davy, do you mean with the georeferencing system, the uh, Dutch or the Flemish uh, geo information about uh, land height? So the A H N actueel Hoogstam Nederland or the Flemish uh, version of it? What was this question to me, Walter? Yes, that, that was the question to you because there are. Uh, I, I interpreted it, your question of uh, the georeferencing system in the XYZ coordinates. If um, uh, focused on the Dutch uh, XYZ or the Flemish XYZ, or that we need to um, check which one we use. Did you mean that, or did you did you mean the thing that Yuri is uh, currently explaining? Well, I meant it uh, in general, and and the explanation that Yuri was given, uh, uh, that Yuri gave, is very relevant. But the question uh, was also asked to see whether it uh, influences on how we deal with georeferencing within the project uh, if we exchange coordinates, for instance. This was a point that was raised last week during a Skype call uh, with the, the team that is uh, looking into data management. Yeah, so I think the uh, technique here is uh, supportive in that sense. Um, so I think it's re really relevant to uh, yeah make um, um, afspraken, uh, an appointment. Yeah, yeah make um, decision. Yeah, rules or decisions regard with regards to communicating uh, locations. Um, the technique uh, supports any type of spatial reference. So it can either be the uh, Belgian or the uh, uh, Dutch one. Um, so yeah, to answer your question detailed, are they reprojected upon import? Yes. Um, and you don't have to worry about um, yeah, the um, reference system. Uh, when you import it. There's one uh, question adding on that. So it doesn't really matter which projection you use for import. So you can actually uh, use either <coughs> projection you want, right? Yeah. OK, so why do we need an agreement on the... Well, I think if you're going system? to request a point using the API, you can also choose your reference system that you're going to use to a request a specific point. Mm -hmm. Well, um, and there's another one. It's just a few <coughs> meters difference between the two uh, different systems. So whenever you think you have a sudden decrease or increase of land height of four meters, that could be just yeah. uh, making the wrong request to the system. And so we need to take that into account. Yeah, so we often use, uh, mm, let me see. Uh, 
this one, <coughs> which is basically a worldwide spatial reference system. It's a well-known one. Um, yeah, and it's basically very often used on web applications. Yeah, so for, for imports, to make it clear, for imports, everything is possible. And then the cal the system... Uh, yeah, reprojects. Reprojects everything in a, in yep. a uniform way. Yep. And you say on the output side, if you want to use several dashboards, it's maybe good to have one, yep. an agreement on how, uh, uh, yeah, which reference system to use. Yeah. So let me go to Davey. Is this... Uh, uh, do you understand it? Do you have more questions? Uh, and does this answer your questions? Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, it, there is no uh, specific. Uh, it, it was an answer to my question, indeed. So thank you very much. Very clear. Uh, and and I think also for communication <coughs> purposes uh, among the teams that it would be good to uh, have a preferential system but maybe this is something that can be discussed next week uh, in the data management uh, meeting in Lille I don't know whether we have to decide this here and now yeah okay uh, we will discuss that afterwards with uh, with Wouter uh, as well okay um, okay thank you. so we're looking into the options of the the catalog uh, I remember there was one question also about the WMS yep. uh, service, so maybe you can give, you, an, example, you can uh, give an example of that, of that. as well. <clears throat> so if you would like to visualize um, a raster that is stored uh, within the DDSC, you can also use the WMS OGC protocol. Um, and we have a uh, link here, and if you copy that, and if I go to, for instance, ArcGIS online, um, I can add this map to ArcGIS quite uh, easily. So I press, this is ArcGIS online, by the way. And I choose add layer from web. Then select the uh, protocol that I'm using. And then I enter the URL. I just copy it and I can get the layers. Uh, and that is due to the fact that ArcGIS only <laughs> allows specific base URLs. So I know that this one is available. And here I can see uh, yeah, all types of um, uh, digital terrain models. So for instance, we can import the one from Vlaanderen and you can also yeah, now have it in ArcGIS. So this is also possible not only in the web viewer, of course, but also on the, the one on your laptop. Yeah, and you can also uh, use this protocol if you want to build an app or something uh, upon this API. Yeah, thank you, Yuri. I think um, we came a little bit to the at the end of the this agenda point. Uh, Wouter made a nice conclusion in the comment section to make clear where we stand there. Um, so we actually have 22 minutes left for this call. What I like to do is, um, uh, well, firstly, ask uh, if there are any questions left um, and give you two minutes for that, <laughs> one minute to react on that. Uh, and then we're gonna conclude uh, this session with one request uh, to make. So just <coughs> pause on uh, one minute. Please think of an uh, extra question and put on a <coughs> chat. Is the mic off? A question of Philip from Serena. Uh, I would like to know uh, how can we find uh, the slides uh, you have presented today?
Okay, thank you. Uh, I see uh, one question. Could you send us the slides? Uh, yes, of course, we will do. Um, uh, we were just uh, shortly discussing here with also uh, Ludolf uh, Wendel present and Roger Zomer that we will do our best uh, to be uh, in Lille the 12th of March. Uh, and we were discussing some support and implementation. Uh, so I guess when we send the slides, we will send also so some questions to you, like uh, if it would be good to have a, maybe a workshop on location, but also uh, maybe sit together to check uh, available data. Um, well, you, you is actually typing in all the questions uh, right now. <laughs> um, yeah, so that we are of course available for support and we can help with uh, connecting uh, other data sources uh, available. So whenever you get an uh, account, uh, which you can receive by using the email address. We will send it again, uh, which was in the chat screen, service desk at mailerscrimos.nl. You get an account. And there will also be an help options with the service desk where you can put your uh, technical questions. Uh, so I think that is good to know. Um, then I also I would like to uh, conclude the session with one other request. Uh, because uh, the third part of the agenda was the, the part on discussing on the information system. But I heard from uh, Dr. Ludov that there are already many talks uh, about that, that it will be further discussed uh, on the 12th of March. So that we will skip that for this, uh, this webinar. But that we would like to ask you to fill in questionnaire two. So maybe Yuri, because your screen is still shared, can you go to hetvigepostpropol.lizard.net to the apps. And then there, oh, and there's the link questionnaire two. So I'll allow you to fill that in in the remaining time of this uh, webinar. Um, yeah, and then Bowser, would you? Uh, would I like to talk? Yeah, would you yes, like please. to say something <laughs> to finalize this uh, conference? So long. No, thank you all for joining uh, the webinar. I think um, uh, we saw what the Data Data Service Centre is uh, capable of and where it uh, uh, can be used for and will be used for in this project. Um, uh, next week in Lille, the 12th of March, we will discuss uh, uh, furthermore how to use the uh, Data Data Service Centre on the uh, one hand, but also how the Data Data Service Centre um, will be linked to all other activities in the project. Those are field measurements uh, and monitoring uh, different types of uh, data bringing and bringing them together, but also the uh, results of field inspections and how to uh, in introduce them and store them in the DAG Data Service Centre, uh, perhaps via the app uh, Marjan uh, uh, already made us acquainted with. Um, and I think uh, for this moment we uh, can conclude uh, uh, Joost. I'm looking to the left again. I should look right into the camera. <laughs> um, and uh, if there are no uh, last questions even now, then uh, uh, we can conclude. Now, yes, thank you. I'm also looking to all the digital screens now. <laughs> no questions anymore. Rudolf, no uh, questions. Thank you all very much for joining. Okay, then uh, uh, please fill in the questionnaire and uh, see you all uh, very soon. Yeah. Goodbye. And Jasper, thank you for all. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.